video I'm going to answer a question that came into uh, the comment section two videos ago and it's a very broad question a lot of us will have different opinions on this how I answer this in this video is strictly just my opinion and by no means is it you know fact it's just my opinion and this gentleman wanted to know how do you get over the fact that you are an addict how do you move on from that how do you you know forgive yourself for being addicted and along those lines I mean there's a lot of consequences from the addicted life Mo most but not all people their personalities change drastically they tend to become very selfish relationships go sour with people that you love and you know respect and care for the drug becomes number one in your life and therefore everybody else gets put on the back burner and there's a lot of guilt and despair with a life addicted to drugs um, along the same lines I mean you start doing things that are out of your normal uh, personality you, you you act erratic you make choices that are dangerous for you and sometimes your loved ones and friends uh, you put people in bad situations you take from people so there's a lot of things that we do when we're addicted that hurt people that we uh, we really care about and when you do reach recovery and you start to you know make amends with people and you start to try to heal the wounds that you have caused the deepest wounds are usually in yourself and it's very hard for a lot of people to look themselves in the mirror and forgive themselves for the atrocities that they committed towards people that they really loved and cared about um, I have much experience in this uh, during the time that I used I was a monster I've talked about it a million times uh, took stole did whatever I had to do to people um, that I really did care about uh, but at that time while I used the only thing that mattered to me in my selfish addicted mind was not getting sick not feeling like I, I was gonna die and in that process I hurt a lot of people I destroyed friendships I destroyed <clears throat> trust I was the best man at my sister's wedding and I didn't even show up I mean there's there's a list there's such a long list of things that you do that you really wish that you could take back but what is very important in my opinion is to not dwell on all the bad things that we did especially in the beginning because we're all fragile very early on in recovery it's best to look towards the future and look not so much towards the future but look towards each day in little victories that you can make yourself better each day not a lot not trying to do extravagant things but small goals each day that will build into you know a much larger goal um, and <clears throat> as time progresses and you're stronger and you have finally gotten to the point where you can enjoy being alone in silence not having things distract you and just be happy in uh, you know by yourself then you can start tackling issues that you need to make amends with other people because the hardest thing in the world I think is forgiving yourself if you were the type of addict I was um, not everybody's like that not everybody hurts people when they're addicted sometimes they just you know they make bad choices and they run their own life into the ground and they don't really affect a lot of other people others like myself affect everybody that's around them 
you're a cancer to everyone. So in some shape or form, you are affecting their life in a negative way. If they just see you, they're like, shit, something's about to go down. I wish it didn't run in the Ryan. That kind of thing. So when you get to a point where, you know, you feel strong enough in your recovery to be able to face face people and make amends and, you know, say sorry and truly mean that you hurt them and you're sorry, that's a, a whole different story. Now, in particular, in this question, he said that he's 11 months clean and he is still suffering from depression. So that is something that concerns me. And once again, I'm not a medical doctor, not a medical professional, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just saying that in all the thousands and thousands of people I've talked to, when you have depression for that long of a time, and you know, almost, almost a year into recovery, it is time to, you know, if you have not done so already, but speak to a doctor. You may have some chemical imbalances in your brain that are not related to opiate abuse. We all have different genetics. Some people's bodies, as they age, you know, things start to deplete, whether it's some males, you know, their testosterone starts to drop. Um, some women have differences with their hormones. And it could be genetic. It could be like if your mother had it or your, your aunt had it, you start to have it. Uh, if your uncle had problems with testosterone, so did your father. Maybe that's something that you might have to deal with. Some some men lose their hair just like their, their grandfather's. You know, it just depends on genetics sometimes, and if depression runs in your family, there's a good chance that it may be something that you will have to deal with. So if you're 11 months in, it may not be something that is directly related to the opiate abuse, and it's something that you may want to speak to a doctor about and see if you have, you know, some issues going on. Uh, in that sense because you don't want to mess around with depression um, you could do everything possible um, to brighten your day you can keep positive mental attitude you can exercise you can eat well uh, you can be around people that you enjoy you can do everything each day that makes you happy uh, but sometimes there's just that chemical imbalance that is keeping you from being happy I mean it just happens so that's definitely something that I would look into. But to end this video, um, I want to make clear that when you are in the beginning, you're going to give yourself a hard time. You're not going to think that things are going to make any sense down the road. You don't think you'll ever be happy again. You don't think that you have a purpose. You don't have anything to live for. You're always going to be going back to using. That's not the way you need to think. Okay. There's always possibilities that happen. And if you, if you do the right thing each day, if you set small goals and you constantly are doing the right thing, you stay consistent each day, you work hard on being a good, good person, you take care of your body. These doors, these doors will start to open to you. Little things will start to happen. And I don't know why it happens, but it happens to pretty much everybody. And I hear back from people all the time that they're doing the right thing and things are happening for them. They're meeting new people that, you know, are helping them in certain ways. They're able to help them. They feel good. Um, they feel like they have a purpose. They're finding new things that they enjoy. And if you're open to change and you're open to, you know, being someone new, uh, starting over, creating a new chapter to your story, if you're willing to do all those things, there's a good chance that you will change over time for the better. And you, people will notice. People will see that you're getting happier and they're going to compliment you and they're going to they're gonna want to be around you more. And, and all the hurt that you've caused, you know, you're not going to make amends with everybody. You're not going to be able to heal all the wounds that you caused but there are going to be people that take notice and will you know start talking to you again or they may you know smile at you if you haven't seen each other in years and you know give a nod and just give you that sense of you know 
Every, how, how's it going type thing. And it's people that you never thought you would ever talk to again. Um, and just doing the right thing each day will take you farther than I can really tell you. I mean, my life has gone in a complete direction that I never thought would be possible in the beginning. And I attribute that to being consistent every day. It doesn't have to be these extravagant goals or have to um, do like amazing things. But if you do small things consistently on a daily basis and you create almost like a routine that is very healthy for you personally, you're going to get, you're just going to be happier. You're going to be excited to wake up. You're going to have goals that you want to reach and you're going to be working towards things that excite you and, and motivate you to continue on the journey that you're on. All right. That's all I got for today. Um, I hope whoever you voted for won. Uh, it was a very interesting night in, in politics. Uh, I hate politics more than anything on the entire planet. Whenever people start talking about politics, I usually leave the room. I, I just, I don't buy into any of it. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Everyone has an opinion in, in America. And that's the great thing about this this country. So I hope you guys enjoyed your your voting and everything worked out in your favor. If not, if the other candidate won that you didn't vote for, um, let's hope that uh, he does well and uh keeps the country you know great <laughs> all right uh leave some comments below if you want to share your story you can email me at ryanacompsport.com the subject line put youtube story my story let me know if you want to use your first or last name or stay anonymous <sighs> sorry i didn't sleep much last night um that's about it all right uh leave some comments leave some advice leave some love and check out some more videos. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.